guys adam flowers here it is wednesday redness day march 1st can't believe first day of march already in 2023 welcome back everybody it's my vlog mr red how you doing today i'm doing chipper i'm happy Lori <laughs> life with loss everybody's making comments in here Awesome. It is good to see everybody. I'm reading the comments on the side. Uh, Tony Damiano, uh, Scott, uh, Scott H., uh, Jim Magnifici, Don Ciccio, Cicero, Julie M., uh, Russ Jackson, Tony Johnson, Slapsy, uh, Tim Hunt. It is good to see all of you guys. Slapsy. Yes. Uh, it's good to see all you guys. Uh, Jim Yeager, nice to see you guys in here. Uh, missed you guys last week, so it's good to see you all uh, still here. Tim Steffs, nice to see you. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the Chicago Outfit's greatest hits. If you're new to the channel, what we talk about here is Chicago Outfit history. Uh, we do uh, talk about Vegas mob history, the connections between the two. Um, my name's Adam Flowers. I run the Vegas Mob Tour. Red Wimette has written the book, uh, Nobody Cares and What I Did. Uh, and if you haven't gotten yourselves a copy, be sure to check that out. Uh, Red, go to redwoodmet.com. So, Red, Thank how's you. the weather in Florida today? In the 80s, it's nice, it's beautiful here. <laughs> See, it's up day, and down. I, I've got the air conditioning on. <laughs> Lucky you with the AC running already. Lucky you. <laughs> Can't wait till that happens in Vegas. Then I start complaining there's not enough of it. Uh, AC that is. <laughs> Camille Tapia, it's nice to see you. Welcome on in. Jesse Arabia, uh, Ara Arabi, Jesse Arabi. Uh, John Ramsey, nice to see you guys. Uh, it is <laughs> um, it is nice to see all of you, even uh, John Smith and Luminous Grin. Although John Smith, that is a very common name. Don't you agree, Red? John Smith. What's your name? John Smith. Yes. John, I wonder if that's really it's, on, it's on every form, John Smith. <laughs> John Smith. I think he forgot to fill in the name. I think that's the one that comes as the standard. <laughs> oh, Michael Graham, good to see all you guys. Who do you want to talk about first, Red? We have so many we could go through uh, that we could bring up and start with. I mean, you got Charles Nicoletti, uh, Giancana. We could talk about him, uh, you know, till we're blue in the face. The Chucky English. Uh, there's Johnny Roselli. What, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to start with? Let's start out with Johnny Roselli. All right. Your choice, Johnny Roselli. He was out here on the West Coast, wasn't he? And uh, for a time, was he sent out or was he, he ended up out here though, right? He was, he was out in California. Uh, they called him Handsome Johnny. He dated all the stars. Um, he was also involved with uh, Las Vegas. He became the interim boss at Las Vegas uh, between uh, Marshall Cafano and between Tony Spilaccio. Uh -huh. So he also was involved with Howard Hughes quite a bit. And he was uh, subpoenaed before the Senate Hearing Committee, the same Senate Hearing Committee that Sam Giancana was uh, subpoenaed before. And they both had testified once. But it yeah. was, it was, kind of common knowledge at the time that they were going to be given uh, immunity. So they had to speak instead of taking the Fifth Amendment the second time. And they were subpoenaed the second time, and all of a sudden there was a rash of killings. <laughs> Johnny Roselli wasn't the first, but uh, uh, Sam Giancana was. Johnny Roselli popped up in an uh, oil drum, 
uh, punctured oil drum on Key Biscayne Beach. And that was in 1977, I believe. Um, Chucky Nicoletti was killed the same year. All these people that seemed to be involved. I'm not saying they were. I'm saying they seemed to be. So this Roselli was recruited by the CIA along with Sam G and Connor to kill Castro, to get in there and kill Fidel. That is that correct. Guy? Yeah, that is correct. Operation Northwoods, I guess, was the name of that, is what Scott H is saying. Yeah, Benedict had a question here for me. What does it say? Sure. So I uh, had a question for Red. Red, do you remember seeing? Or no, any famous blues guitarists like Johnny Lee Hooker or Albert King, very influential musicians. It's a little off topic, but okay, go ahead, go for it. I don't remember them. I really don't. Mm. I really don't remember them. All right. So, uh, so in my in my opinion, um, and Roselli was at the Daily Plaza, right? Yes. Yeah, supposedly. Benedict, thank you for the super sticker. Appreciate you. Uh, Tim Peroni. In my opinion, Sef Santo Traficante had a hit, uh, had had him hit the CIA, a.k.a. the agency. I think it was a combination. People put their heads together. That's my own personal opinion. I don't think any one person was involved in it. It was almost like the murder of Tony and Michael Splacho. There wasn't one person there. There was a bunch of people involved. And I think the planning and everything was done through a lot of different people. Am I discounting Santos Traficana? No. Or Traficante, however you want to pronounce it. No, I'm not. I'm not discounting anybody. But I think they all had a hand in it. Yeah, I think it's Traficante. Um, Santo Traficante. Um, Van Pasterman, Jimmy the Weasel tells a story that Iupa wanted to know Jimmy's feelings on Roselli being killed. He was testing to see if Jimmy was going to cause trouble. Did you ever hear that? That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah. And one okay. of the hits out there was the bomb, Bompanero. Ah. I believe his name was Jimmy Bompanero, was it not? The bomb. Yeah, that's what you said. At least what, that's what I heard you say. He was, yeah. he, was, he was West Coast. He was California. Tommy Bridges, a little late to the party. That's good. Better late than never. Michael Graham, speaking of Howard Hughes. Did we bring up Howard Hughes? Speaking of Howard Hughes. Okay, speaking of Howard Hughes. Somebody I think, comment brought him up. We, okay, speaking of Howard Hughes, say, I, I just didn't remember saying anything. So that's okay. I could have missed a comment. It's all right. Michael Graham, good to see you, buddy. I think it's safe to say Howard Hughes single-handedly ushered in the era of corporate-owned casinos in Las Vegas. He had a big hand in it. Uh, the government stopped him when he tried to buy the Stardust. But there was, I mean, he started with the Desert Inn. He went on to buy uh, uh, a bunch of others up Hacienda? and down the street. I believe Did so. Did so, I believe so, yes. Um, I believe so. Don't quote me on that one. Um We'd have to look up the Outfit list. But. Boss, Outfit boss, Jimmy Fratiano said Frank Schweiss killed Johnny Roselli in a FBI file. An FBI file. You, you hear anything that's about correct. that? That's correct. That is correct. So Frank that's, Schweiss that's killed Roselli. Yeah, I, I told you he told me about it. Do you have that one on tape? Is that one on one of your on one of your, your wiretap? Uh one of your I don't it's on one of them. I don't know which one though. We gotta go through those, Red. We got time. We got time now. Uh thank that you. That is history. Bomp and Sierra. Right? Bomps? Bomp right. and Sierra was his name. Uh they called him the Bomp because his name was so difficult to, to speak. Bob yeah, I think it's Bob and Sierra. If I'm pronouncing it correctly, I, I may. So his I may nickname was the Bob. B O M P. Um, okay, so uh, who killed Roselli? Tim Stuffs. I think it just answered that. Uh, Jesse, don't be sorry. He went by both names. Uh, did Red? Did Red know? I and uh, uh, Inandino was an informant. 
Yes, did you know I did. You know, yeah, Norman, Ken Lowry. Pick- Ken Lowry in the seventies. Uh, Ken Lowry was uh, Strike Force, and um, I was working with John Osborne as a control agent at that time, and. Uh, uh, Ken Lowry did discuss it with me. We were all subpoenaed. He was one that was subpoenaed before a grand jury. I didn't go. I didn't go before. I think I wrote about it in the book, but I didn't go to the, the grand jury subpoena, but I have never, ever talked about that. And when I heard of his death and did a show yesterday about him, I did not, or two days ago, I did not even mention it. And after the show, it was all over in the room. And I said, this is not right. I mean, at a funeral, I mean, the day of his funeral, they bring this out. Why didn't they bring it out earlier? It's not not really right. Really is. Yeah. I didn't think so. A Philly Dwyer just found you guys. Glad I did. New fan here from Ireland, guys. Hey, welcome in, Philly. Welcome uh, from Ireland, the Amber Lyles. <laughs> hope I'm saying your name right, Dwyer. Um, that, that's what it looks like to me. That's but, Dwyer. That's Dwyer. Right. Philip Dwyer. <laughs> Philly Dwyer. Well, with the red hair, you should know an Irish name, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm serious, which brings me to uh, to my joke of the day. It's Welcome, Patty, and, it's Patty and Murphy. They uh, they fancy a pint, but they only have a, a dollar between the two. So Patty goes off and he buys a sausage. Murphy says, "Are you mad?" So now we got broke. He says, "Come on, Patty, follow me." So they go into the pub and they order two pints and they drink them before they pay. Well, Patty shoves the sausage through the zipper of his jeans. And he tells Murphy, he says, get down on your knees, he says, and suck it. So the barman goes berserk, and he throws them out. So 10 pubs and 10 pints later, Murphy <laughs> says, I can't do this anymore. My knees are too sore, and I'm pissed. He says, how do you think I feel, Patty? He said, he said, I can't even remember which pub I lost the sausage in. <laughs> <laughs> Roselli was with Schweiss yeah. in Daily Plaza, right? Yes, that's that is correct. How that goes? Wait um, a second. Uh, yeah. Roselli Schweiss was not there. He was not in Daily Plaza. No, no. Schweiss wasn't there. No. Daily Plaza. Frank no. Schweiss was not in Daily Plaza. No. Great. Get that. We'll get that right there. All right. So, Chicago Joe. The casinos that Hughes bought, Castaways, New Frontier, the Landmark Hotel and Casino, Sands, and Silver Slipper. Those were the Hughes hotels, those five. I believe he tried to buy Stardust, and that's when they shut him down and said no more. But each time he bought one, he wrote the um, the uh, uh, senator or the governor a letter saying, you know, you're welcome. Got another one out. Joseph Collada, how's it going, Joe? It's good to see you. I hope all is doing well. And, uh, yeah, I hope all's moving along and uh, things are well. It makes sense that the German killed him in Florida, Scott H. Maybe. I don't know how much sense it makes, but he, he said he did it. Yeah. Jim Magnifici, Adam, you need more Smiths and Joneses as prescribers. You're, you're right, Jim. Those are easy names for me to work out through my mouth. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't have all these hard fucking names. Give me the easy ones. Chicago I, Joe. I don't know how many. Allie said hello. I don't to know Joe how many people are. Well, look at that. Allie's on. She's watching. She's Allie's laid up on. right now. That's why I wasn't on here yet, uh, last week because I was taking care of Allie. So, yeah. Anyway. I don't know how many money. People want to hear the story. Do you, or it's about Frank Schweiss telling me about Roselli. It was um, it was a thing where he lived at uh, Hollywood, Florida, and they killed him in broad daylight, and they had to get rid of the body because they actually killed him in a home in a structure. I don't know which one, but they kept the body overnight. Rigor mortis set in, and they cut him in half. And put him in an oil drum because he wouldn't fit in. And they let him go out with the tide. They figured he was gone. He was never going to be found. Mm-hmm. A couple days later, his body washes up on Key Biscayne. It hit the Straits of uh, uh, Florida. 
or state, you know, in between Cuba and the United States, and it came all the way around. <laughs> the, the Kurds brought him back in. It was a shock yeah. to everybody. Oh my gosh. That's no good. I'm not for, you know. I believe Wayne Bach was with him on that hit. Wayne Bach was with him on that hit. Wayne Bach was a real big guy. All right, before I get to Joe's question, we got we got a little comment here, a question from So I'm a Flight Risk. That's a nice name, So I'm a Flight Risk. <laughs> so I'm a Flight Risk. Hey, don't Adam fly Red. With me, then. <laughs> you don't fly with Red. He's been in three plane crashes. Every time on a Friday the 13th, you don't even want to be around Red on a Friday the 13th. You'd be within a mile radius of this man over here. <laughs> hey, Adam and Red, did Sam Giancana ever sleep with Tony Spilatro's wife or Marshall Caifano's wife? What? Yes, he, he slept what? with Whoa, Darlene. are you serious? Yeah, he slept with Darlene, Mar Marshall Caifano's wife. Marshall Caifano told me, he said, that was my ticket back to Chicago. I knew I was going to be boss when I got back to Chicago. You know, I was going to be upped. <clears throat> he had been in prison. And when he got out, he figured, you know, it'd be okay. Oh, hold on. Marshall Caifano's wife slept with... Darlene. Darlene. Darlene Caifano slept with Sam Giancana. Oh, they had an affair. So they, they had weren't an affair together. They were, they were going out. When he was in prison. All right, so so your guy goes to prison and then you start sleeping with his wife. We start dating as you start having an affair. Marshall wasn't start... even upset over it. He said, "Let her go." He said, "That's my ticket back to Chicago." He said, "I'll, I'll have it made." He gets back to Chicago. Tony Accardo says, uh, "I think you'll work as uh, consigliere for uh, Joey Lombardo," and that's when he put him with Lombardo. What? Yeah. Seriously, huh? Fuck. I, I wouldn't want to trade something like that off. I'm not saying that just because Allie's watching either, Red. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm All right, let's get to Joe Colada's question. Adam, what did you think of the lyrics for my brother's story? Uh, Joe, I got to talk to you about that because they didn't work. I tried to listen, and it didn't come through. It was late the other night, and I didn't want to call so late. So, um, But they didn't work, so I got you got to resend them, or so, somehow they forwarded. It didn't show up to me. So, but I'd love to hear it because um, I hear that uh, there is progress being made, which is awesome. A luminous grin. Hope to be in Vegas in April. Come on the Vegas Crime Tour. Uh, it'll be a fun, uh, fun time. Mobbed up podcast. Uh, good to see you. Uh, you could take the mob tour too while you're here if you want to see that again luminous grin but i know you've already been on it so do the the crime tour and and uh let me know what you think of that douglas sullivan hey adam good to see you're doing well in vegas i don't know if i'm doing well in vegas but i'm i'm in vegas <laughs> I, I always knew you would doug from calumet city former patron of the tombstone doug oh my gosh are you serious doug holy shit man it's good to hear from you, man. I'm glad to see that you're uh, you're alive and well, and uh, that's great. Best tour in Vegas. Got to do it. Hollywood 210. Thank you very much. Uh, Jim Yeager, for those of you on medication, it was uh, 422 minutes ago. <laughs> Tim Peroni, the gas station in his stomach caused the barrel to surface. The gas in his stomach caused the barrel to surface. That's what caused his barrel to come up, huh? all the gas. I guess it wasn't enough well, out they, there in they they put holes in the uh, drum. They perforated the drum with an axe. So there were holes in it and thought that it would just sink. It didn't. Uh, okay. Marshall said one time about that. What's the difference? You can't wear it out. <laughs> really? Are you serious? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Talking about his wife cheating. I know he was cold. Are you fucking serious? That's like a prostitute. They got That's it. They sell it. They still got it. A hell of a business to be in. <laughs> <laughs> Did Sam get off on sleeping with his underlings' wives? He must right? have. He Maybe, must. Have. I mean, why? If he did, if he didn't get didn't off, know he the guy. I did not know the guy, but I can tell you one thing for sure: he must have because. 
he went everywhere he wanted to go. <clears throat> wow. Wow. Like I mean, if you're if you're if you're in that position, I suppose, you know, go up to your head a little bit. No, and, uh... it doesn't matter which position you're in. It just matters your character. It's like Tony Accardo. He never slept around. He was he stayed with Carlise, his wife. That was it. That was only, he never had a mistress. It was one woman yeah. for him, a family. That was it. Um Tim Hunt, Red, did you know Johnny Red Kerr from DEA Bulls? My dad grew up with him on the south side. No, I did not, Tim. No. I did not no, know Tim. him. Sorry. No, but Tim, tell your brother Mike I said hi. Ja, Van Pasterman, it goes to show you that the boss can break the rules. It was supposed to be against the rules to sleep with a maid man's wife, girlfriend, etc. Van Pasterman, that's what I understood. Right, you could lie, cheat, steal, kill, but you don't sleep with some other guy's wife because that'll get you killed. That's what I was always heard was the you know the 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 rules. It's right? one of the it's one of the things you take an oath to. Mm. Yeah, you're supposed so. to respect your fellow members. <laughs> um, luminous grin. See you then. I'm glad. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Uh, I made helmets for Red when Jordan dusted him. I called it Red's Rosen Repeller. Red's Rosen Repeller. I I don't know what he's talking about. Talking about Jordan from I don't the Bulls. Either. Okay. Um, Scott, hey, you take the crime tour. You won't regret it. No, you won't. Scott Scott was on it. Scott took the very first one. Uh, outfit boss Red and Adam talk about Danny Seifert murder that put Joe Lombardo in prison. Danny Seifert murder. Okay. Go ahead. Danny Red. was a nice kid. Danny was a nice kid. He was 29 years old. Um, I never met him, but I was around the places that he was around with Irv Weiner and uh, uh, Milwaukee Phil, Phil Aldericio. And uh, he was doing okay. They were coming up in the business, laundering the money from the skim from uh, the Stardust. No, it wasn't for the Stardust. It was a skim from uh circus circus and had the skim from the circus circus the can it's a fighter's fee that they got for it and they had this big um board up in the office over at eleventh estate um was the um American bonding and they were trying to figure out what they did with the money and what they were doing was they were laundering the money through Danny's company, which was a fiberglass company. And they also laundered it through um, Plastomatics, which was out in um, Deming, New Mexico. And that was Tony Spalacho's baby. Well, all of a sudden, Danny gets called in by the strike force and the IRS, and they put the screws on him. They said, you owe this much money, and you're going to prison. And your wife is going to prison, too, because... She signed the uh, income tax returns that she filled out. She was on there. And Danny says, I'm not going to prison. A young man. He was 28 years old. Mm -hmm. By the time he was 29 years old, just think, think back when you were 20, 29. He said, no way. Joey Lombardo tried to contact him dozens of times. They drove past the house, or he did, and he was trying to talk him out of it. Well, he had a uncle... Danny had an uncle that worked for Milwaukee Phil. That was his in. And Irv Weiner liked him, too. So he said, there, I'm just not going to do it. Well, they all got together. And from what I understand now is that mainly Tony was the big pressure because he was out in uh, Deming, New Mexico with, with the Plastomatics. And uh, that was a... A real military style uh, a murder. They had block cars. They had everything else. And they really did a number on him. They really did. Wow. Uh, Frank Schweitz held him. Held him. And tried, they wrestled over a gun. He got shot. Uh, Danny got shot um, in the side of the face. He ran. And when he got outside, he was running from building to building in an, an industrial complex. And then... 
One of the guys walked up to him, put a shotgun to his head and blew his head off. And that was it. It devastated the family. As a matter of fact, uh, deadly, uh, what, what's the name of that? Um, deadly Associates is a book about it that was written by uh, Joey and uh, Nick Seifert, the sons of, of uh, Danny. And doesn't he have a, a, a YouTube channel? Not anymore. He did. He okay. didn't stay with it. Okay. Um, Grace, everyone new, if you haven't seen Coffee with Colada videos, really great and interesting stories, check them out. There is an entire playlist. Go to the playlist. Check it out. It's on the channel. Um, you can start at number one, work your way through it. There's 100 episodes. I'm uh, 99. YouTube took one down. 99 episodes. So, uh, Julie M., I thought it was a no-no to sleep with another member's wife. Exactly. Yeah. It's a no-no to do that. <laughs> what <laughs> Uh, Will wants to know what event, uh, what event or era do you personally think the outfit died out? Let's talk about the bosses dying and the the different people that were hit and killed. Which we, well, you know, another one we should talk about is that Richard Kane. Um, but nineteen seventy three, seventy three, right? That oh, was that about at the same time the RICO laws were enacted, right? About that right. same year, yeah. So that and that was yeah, really. Yeah. He had come back year. from Mexico. He came back from Mexico, and he was trying to get Sam Giancana to come back from Mexico mm -hmm. and kind of set up things for him. And he set up a deal with Marshall Cofano, where they actually – he called Marshall Cofano at Rosie's Sandwich Shop, which mm -hmm. was on Grand Avenue. And after he called him there, he was sure he was there. And he said, I'll meet you. Mm -hmm. And when he went to meet him there – uh, I saw Frank. I didn't know who was what happened at the time, but I saw Frank Schweiss outside with a walkie-talkie in his hand, and uh -huh. Harry Edelman was on the roof. You could see him up on the roof. His Firebird, he had a a real souped-up. Uh, I don't know if it was a Firebird or not, but it was a Pontiac, uh -huh. and um, it was a really hot car. It was parked over on the side, and all of a sudden you heard this boom. It was both barrels, but. Marshall had left the building. He was gone. Marshall just set him up. That's all. And uh, there lied the, the ghost of Richard Kane for a long time. All right, Red. So I got Joe Collada on the line. Hey, Joe, how's it going? It's going real good. I got a story for you about after the Spalatro brothers got killed. Okay. I was I was cutting this guy's hair. They called him a Big Don, the large guy. Not Mike Sarno. This is Big Don. So I was cutting his hair. He was big bookmaker, one of the biggest in Chicago. And I said to him, I says, I could see Tony getting beat up. I said, you know, he had a bad heart. He was old. At the time, he was almost 50. I said, I could see him getting beat up. I said, but Michael, I said, Michael was tough. He worked out eight hours a day. He turned his head and he looked at me real serious. And he goes, when they want you, they send the guy that works out nine hours a day. There's never a problem. Mm -hmm. he goes, that little mother of her thought he was Michael Corleone walking around kissing everybody on the cheek. He got what he deserved. He was referring to Michael, not Tony. But uh, it's just a story. But I just wanted to pass that on to you. Wow. Wow. So when they... And they Thank you, Joe. It, it works out nine hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, Rod? What's up? They always send somebody bigger. Somebody that's capable of doing the job. <laughs> that's right. There's no. They always do. Said. All right, I'll let you guys go back to work. Hey, thanks a God bunch, you, Joe. Joe. Have and a I'll good send day. You, and, I'll, and I'll send you that. Uh, they got a couple lyrics. They got a couple uh they got the first set of lyrics written for the song, and the second set they're going to put in the music. It's it's really good, Adam. You're going to okay, love it. I can't wait to when, hear it. When you get it, I want you to play the first set on your show and see. Uh, maybe I'll try and send it to you now on an email. Yeah, and go play ahead. the first set of lyrics. Yeah. And 
See if the, see what the people think of it. Yeah, okay? we'll play it. Sure, as long as I okay. can do that, it's that's cool. That's not a you know copyright issue. Right. I'm, I'm good. Yeah. No, 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 Mike. No, there. Okay. It's written by it's written by the God. Oh, it's written by the show. It's do written it. by yeah. Robert Mackey. Let's do it. And with along with Bob Buell. Okay. And I'll send you the song. Okay. Yeah. Bye, buddy. All right. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 All right. We'll watch for that okay. to come through. And if we do get it in here in the next few minutes, I will definitely play it live and you guys can hear um, you guys can hear uh, the lyrics for it. Uh, Joe's been working on the show along with a few other guys. Uh, Mackey and Buell have also been working on it, Bob Buell and, and Robert Mackey. So, you know, I, I hope that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, Johnson has a comment here. Freddie Pacetti. He says Fred Pacetti. Uh, okay. Marta was in the diner and was put against the wall like everyone else. That's correct. He was. And later on, I heard him talking to somebody else. I, we were all in a group. group and uh, he You're breaking up, Rest. He said, I didn't see anything. Oh, hold on, Red. Red, you're breaking up if you can hear me. Okay. All right, go ahead. I can Start hear you. Start over. I... Yep. Uh, Joe Lombardo told the police officers that he said he told the police officers, I didn't see anything except those two big barrels that were in my face. But actually, he was the one that pulled the trigger. He was the one that blew Kane away. Ah, Okay. Hmm. Um, Don Chichio, rumor was Michael could be a bit nasty and arrogant at Hoagies. Um, so I agree. So Frank, I agree. Uh, so Frank Frank Collada told me that that um, he was like kind of a wise ass, and he wanted to be in the spotlight. He was hanging out with Robert Conrad. He was got into that episode of Magnum PI where he portrayed a federal agent. And uh, he wanted to do magic, wanted to be a magician, did, did card tricks and whatnot. Um, Frank thought that was funny when I did magic tricks for him the first time. That was the first thing he said. Yeah, hey, Michael Spilatro is a mess with magic tricks, too. And I said to him, really? It was the first thing he ever said to me about him. Uh, Trace, always good to hear your stories, Mr. Colada. Thank you. Yes, would like to hear the song. Well, he's just in luck that I happen to have uh, a text that just came through from him. Uh, from Joe. Let me make sure that this works. Uh, Tim Peroni, Michael Jordan used to pour resin on his hands before the game and go over to the Chicago Bulls announcer, whose name was Red Car, and clap the powder in his face. I don't remember that, but now I know what the hell he's talking about. Oh, that early. I had no idea what you were talking about, Tim, but now, okay, thank you for explaining that. Let me thank make you, sure that Tim. Works. Okay, let's check this out. All alone, on my own. I can feel my heart beating, beating, beating almost to hell. Take the kill and walk away. Can't show any pain. 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 That sounds cool. I, um, you know, that has a Michael Mann beat to it. Does it? Yeah, it does. It reminds me of uh, uh, Thief, where he, he plays the music in the back, the tempo he that tempo he has there. Let me play it again. I had it too high in the beginning. All alone, on my own. I can feel my heart beating, beating almost to hell. Take the kill and walk away. Can't show any Some of I hate to kill and walk away. Can't show any pain. Can't show any pain. Got it. Then it just reprises. Can't show any pain. That's cool, man. That sounds really cool. I like that for an intro. 
for a I show. like it. I like it, Joe. I really do. I like the beat and everything. It sounds very um Yeah, no, it sounds very uh, the beat, the feel to it. I like that. Uh, it like I said, it reminds me of the beat in behind Michael Mann's movie in Thief. He had that kind of rhythm, the same as the song, and it brings back the old days, really. Yeah, right. That's what it. And that's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's supposed to do. So, um, by the way, I okay. wanted to mention this. It yes. was well known that Michael Splacho was Tony's younger brother, and having a, a, a young, uh, an older brother. He thought he could throw his weight around. Nobody's going to hurt me because of my brother. I got a big brother here. Nobody's going to hurt me because of him. And that was kind of the attitude he had. He was kind of a prima donna. Sure. As, as a matter of fact, this is something I don't know if I should even bring up, but uh, several people made jokes about the underwear that he was buried in because they were uh, like nylon or something like that. Oh, they here we high. go. Bringing up his underwears. Well, he was kind of a, I don't know. He was just kind of a a, a dapper. He, he threw his weight around. He was, he was, um, who had he the wouldn't have done underwear? that. He wouldn't have acted like that if he didn't have Tony for a brother. Who had, who had the nylon underwear? Michael? Michael. Yeah, figures. He was Hollywood all the way. Sure. I was looking for a picture. I can't find it. Let's move on. Okay, so Trace is uh, a comment here. Can you mention the artist name that, that actually did that song? That's can you cool? Can you mention the artist? Robert Mackey uh, wrote that with Bob Bull. They're um, they're working on the show uh, on the miniseries, so they've been writing and um, it's it's good too. Um, I, I wish I could share it, uh, but I can't. Um, the the uh, episode so far for the screenplay it's, it's ex excellent outfit boss i used to have spandex underwear um, it was popular back in that era it was popular back in the 80s because the scott h said i thought it was silk uh, they, it's they silk. said it was silk, but it was a ray i still today i don't like it but you know everybody yeah. has their own taste yeah yeah, well, I mean, what do you they know were about boxer that? briefs. They weren't. Uh, They're boxer briefs. What do I know about Freddie Pacenti? What do I know about Freddie Pacenti? Um, I sold, uh, yeah, Freddie Pacenti. Um, Pacente. 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 Okay. Pacente. I called him Freddie Pacenti. Pacenti. <laughs> so back me up on this, man. It's Pacente. I'm telling you. I'm That's the way it's written. That is the way okay, you pronounce it. I can look at that. I'm telling you, it's Pisante. That's like my name is We Met. We Met. And a lot of people say, We'll Met. We'll Met. They'll say we'll other met. things. But we'll Met, Illinois. We'll Met. We'll Met. We Met. I got we'll that met. going through school all the time. Um, I sold Freddie my Model 29 uh, Smith & Wesson, the 44 Magnum. He liked it. I knew him quite well. He was a okay. friend of Tony Splatter's. Okay. Uh, Tim Peroni wants to talk about the basement. Time to talk about Spilatro's. Where was the basement? It was in Bensonville. What town? Bensonville. Yeah. Whose house? Don't know. Whose house, Fred? That was Louis Eberle's old house. He had moved to um, Oak Brook. Okay. And the house was empty. He passed away in 1987. Okay. Okay. There was a so, lot of controversy over that because oh, Nick Calabrese said he didn't know where he was at. So, so what bosses were there? Because there were bosses there, correct? Yes. Uh, Sam Carlisi was there. Uh, uh -huh. Johnny DeFranzio was there. Uh, Louis Eberle was there. At that time, he was the boss of the Grand Avenue crew. Yeah. Uh, other bosses. Yeah. I don't recall the other bosses, but there were 
there were several bosses, and then there was a lot of muscle. Oh, uh, Calabrese. He wasn't a boss, though. Frank wasn't there. He was recovering from uh, – Frank Calabrese Sr. was in Florida at the time. He was recovering from a surgery. Okay. Uh, Nick, his brother, was there. Okay. But he wasn't a boss. Frank Schweiss was there. Um, there were a lot of people there. Joe Collada, paid to kill and walk away. Yes. Uh, Gino Palermo, did you read his book? Read his book. I think Don't he's know. talking about Larry Pacetti's book. I did not read it, no. Um, okay. Pesante. All right. So, uh, Mad Attack. What are the, uh, well, you're actually right. You're absolutely right. They did call him Louis the Mooch. They called him, yeah, Louis the Mooch. Calabrese. I'm Calabrese. Michael M. Calabrese. I'm Calabrese. I, I don't know what that means. Um, hey, that's a part of Italy. That's a part of Italy. Okay. I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. That, that is a part. Matt Attack, I'd like to hear war, more about Messino, Willie Messino. We will. Maybe we could talk him on the other channel. I'm going to talk. After we're over here, Adam and I are going to uh, my channel, if you're coming with me, Adam. Yeah, and uh, we're going to talk about the toughest guys in Chicago. And okay. Willie Messino was one of them. Well, speaking of then, who was in the basement? I just tried to give you an idea of what I know. I can't remember all the names. It was mentioned during the Family Secrets trial, but um, not everybody was. There was a lot going on at that trial. It's like me right now remembering everything. I mean, I was not there. I did not see it. But I know some of the actors from or actors, people that were there from uh, talking to Schweiss, Frank Schweiss. Uh, yes, Calabrese was there, Gino Palermo. Calabrese was in the basement. Uh, that senior. was Nick. Nick was the first one to tackle Michael. He tackled him, grabbed his legs, and held him at the bottom of the steps. Tony was at the top of the steps, and somebody was holding Tony on each side. They were on each side of him. And when uh, Michael got tackled, uh, there was a garrot thrown around his neck that was, uh, that was Louis Eberle. And then somebody stepped in and slit his throat. Oh, geez. And that's when Michael said, or, or Tony said, can I say a prayer for my brother? And they said no. And then the beatdown started on him. Oh, geez. So isn't it strange that it happened like in the movie that there was a, you know, that they held him down. It's like in the movie. I'm just wondering. I mean, it's just coincidental. So I'm saying, I don't know. Well, Adam, they knew by the, time the movie came out. They everybody knew what happened. I mean, the, the U.S. Attorney knew what happened. Everybody knew what happened. They just didn't have any witnesses. You can't have a trial without witnesses. And that's when family members came in and blew the whole thing off. I got to look for this list. Don Chichio says there's a list of who was there. Um, in the basement, Red, um, Sam Carlisi, Who Louis wrote Marino. the list? Was, was it uh, Scott Bernstein? Who wrote the list? Well, was where's the list? Uh, yeah, where's the list? Is that is that from? Uh, is that a court document? That's why I'm just wondering because I tell that story during the mob tour, and sometimes people ask questions. So I, I you know, um, there were a lot, Gino, of, a lot of people there. Louis de Mucho's my father. 20,000 Gino Palermo. Gino, Louis you're Mucho. never going to get it. Come on. <laughs> Gino Palermo, paid by God. Paid by God. <laughs> uh, it was from Nick's testimony, Red, according to Don. It's from Nick's testimony. Yes, Nick's testimony was inaccurate in some ways because he couldn't remember every detail. There were some things, Don Cheech, that um, he just couldn't remember. And he was asked questions, and he, he, he was like I am right now. He just said, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm really not sure. We know DeFranza was there? Yes. He was, was upstairs. There. Now, Schweiss he was upstairs. told me, 
he, Schweiss told me that when they came in, they didn't go directly to the basement. They went to the living room and they had some drinks. They had scotch. And right. it was kind of like, salute, you're being made, da-da, da-da, you know, get them comfortable, loosen them up. And they walked them down the basement stairs, and that's when it happened. Now, some people have disputed this with me and said, well, how the hell do you know? You know, and actually, aside from Schweiss telling me this, it came out in the autopsy. They had alcohol in their system, in their blood. So they did have drinks beforehand. Chicago Joe, according to him, James LaPietra. He was there. Piet, Pietra, sorry. James LaPietra. John Fecarada. John DeFranzo. Sam Carlisi. Louis the Mujebeli. James Marcello. I forgot him. Louis Marino. Right. Joseph Mariola. And Ernest yes. Rocky Infelice. Most of those guys are made. <laughs> Hey. The only one that I see. Hey, 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 I just got all those names right. Write the fucking time and date down. I just got through a whole list <laughs> of them. Fuck any one of them up. Do you hear that? On the first <laughs> of March, 2023. <laughs> Finally. Well, Thank you, Chicago Joe. Uh Tim Peroni, why were they buried in Indiana? Why wouldn't it uh why wouldn't it have been easier to, to dump them in the Calsag channel? The Calsag channel. Why it probably why would have. But the plan was made out by the boss, and the boss said, we're going to bury him in the, by uh, Joey um, uh, Ayupa's hunk club. And they were yeah. supposed to bury him. They were supposed to bury him on the hunk club property in the woods. But the, the, there were roots, and it was too hard to dig. It was nighttime. And, they, and not only that, what they didn't know was Joey Ayupa had sold that particular property and moved like three miles away. <laughs> so he didn't even know. Yeah, own it at the time. But softer side with dirt and sand and whatever is easier, and they dig in the farm field, and instead of doing the hard work, they screwed the whole thing up. I mean, they really screwed up the burial team. team. It was crazy. According to William, according to William Kirchmeier, it's because Illinois sends its trash to Indiana. Well, Betty Taco also <laughs> talked. About Come on, that's <laughs> fucking funny, man. Illinois sends its trash to Indiana. That's why they buried the Spilatros. The... God, come on. You got to give it to William. That's funny. The crowd, I'm with you on that. I'm crying. That's funny a little bit. <laughs> oh. Adam, you graduated. <laughs> yeah, Adam, pronounce it all correctly. Yes, repeat it again, Adam. I know. It's the damn spell check. Uh, attention, mob vloggers. Adam actually pronounced every Italian name correctly. LOL. <laughs> I'm telling you, write it down, man. This doesn't happen all the time. Jesse Arabia, first show. I caught Adam, said my name right. He never got it right again. Jesse Arabia, Arabi, didn't I say that? Or Arabi? Maybe it was Arabi. Jesse Arabi. Arabi. Arabi, it's pronounced, I believe. Maybe it's Arabi. Anyway, look at that. I got it right, and then I didn't get it right. See? Where's Adam? Who is this guy? I don't know, Kraut. I have no idea who is this guy. Holy cripes. So, you're disrespecting Red's friend. I think he means Tony. Yeah. He pronounced mine right from the start. Oh, thank you. Air A B. He's gone. Air -A -B. He's gone. Nobody's going to bring him back. All the money in the Air world, nothing Air is B. going to bring him back. He's gone. Air A B? Air A B. Air A B or Air A B? I think it's Air A B. Jesse Air A B. Air A B. Air A B. Right. So, Air A B. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are funny. Uh, first time for everything, Russ Jackson. You're damn right. Don Chichio, it pissed me off when the Spilatro family refused to pay the ambulance bill. So the coroner made no fucking way. The coroner made T-shirts that said Spilatro's Fertilizer Company. Oh, <gasps> no. Are you serious? I never heard that before. I never heard I about that before. I never heard that. They refused to pay the ambulance bill. All right, number one, that's wrong by the Spilatros. They should have paid the ambulance bill. 
Okay. I'm with the ambulance company on this so far. So the coroner who owned the ambulance company made t-shirts that said Spilatro's Fertilizer Company. That was the ambulance from Indiana to Chicago. Oh my that was god. The ambulance from, it was a long ride. Wow. That's crazy. I would assume I they never... were both in the same ambulance. I would assume they wow. didn't put them both in the same ambulance. So they had to pay. That was probably maybe four thousand dollar ride. I'm I'm just I, I Don Cheat just told me to look this up. I'm not okay. seeing um, I'm not seeing it. I'm going to have to really, so just searching that one thing didn't do it for me, but I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to prowl further for that. That's, I've never heard that. Before. Don't bet against me. Look it up. Well, I'm not betting against you. Actually. Crazy. So the Don wouldn't lie. No, Don no. Wouldn't lie. he's not going to lie. If that happened, that happened. If he's saying it happened, it happened. That's just, I, I it's crazy that the company did that, but I mean, I'm I not saying it didn't that. happen either. I just said the first time I ever heard of it. Oh, for the record, the Spilatro brothers were not trash. Tim Peroni has a question here. Tim Peroni. Tim Peroni. We had to get buried alive. Tim Peroni, the answer is no. They were not buried alive. Um, yes. According, according to the autopsy report, according to the autopsy report, we go. they found... Um, Dust, dust and sand in his body or in his lungs or in both of their lungs. Maybe so they the were mouth? alive when they went in the hole. Maybe in the mouth. Oh yeah. But they were they were dead when they were put in the trunk of the car. But they don't. That mean they had to they had to breathe it in. Hey, look at here. Check this, it in. Out. Check this out. I got I got a couple of let's just say I got a couple of anonymous text messages and even a phone call from an anonymous person that told me that both of the brothers were dead. When they were put in the trunk of the car, and there would have been no way in hell that they would have left Bensonville alive. They would have taken that chance. That sounds very <laughs> logical. That sounds very logical. But yeah. how, how do you explain the autopsy reports? You can have the mouth how open. The lungs, how do you get, you how do you get dirt, into the lungs? Into as you the throw lungs. dirt in the hole, you're going to get, you know, into the, you know. You're gonna get Some a little of it's dirt. gonna go in the mouth, but how do you get it? How do you get it down in the lungs? Uh, I don't know about this, Red, because I'm you telling you, I you tell breathe. me they're like there ain't no I way in hell. They were unconscious. Maybe they were brain dead. Maybe they were brain dead at the time, but their body was still functioning. Adam, not believing in science. I'm believing in science, but I'm I'm also believing in what I was told, which, 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 you know, I mean, I kind of, Araby, sorry, Araby. <laughs> Thank you, Araby, Jesse. I got your name right now. Thank you, Jesse. Araby, like Airbnb, David PMX. Unreal. Sorry, he's not making fun of you. Um, there's still men, not trash. That's all I'm saying. I, I, so I, I think the crowd was just making a little joke. Let's not all get sensitive, okay? I don't think he was calling them trash. He was just making a I joke. Didn't get sensitive over it. Indiana, and it's like there's Indiana's lesser than Illinois, and that's how they look at it when you live there, and it's all crazy and and whatever. But nobody take it too personally. I don't think that he meant it that way. All right, so why do you think so many African guys never, never believe the Chicago, the Chicago corner? This was not See? the Chicago corner. This was a corner in Indiana that did the initial workup. Okay, so, Michael, why do you think so many outfit guys were at Tony's Michael's murder? Was it to make Tony and Michael feel comfortable that the reason they was there yeah. were there was to have Michael be made? Okay. Um I was told they had everybody there because they had a meeting beforehand. Ferriola held a meeting beforehand and said, we're all going to do this together. He's going to know it's a one, it's, it's a unified thing. He's not, not coming back to Chicago after he screwed up Las Vegas. He's not taking over Chicago. 
We're not going to pay him tribute. He's not going to be the boss. So we're all going to take a hand in it. It was kind of like, in, it was described to me as like Julius Caesar when they all put a knife in him. And he okay. said, you too, Brute? Brutus, Brutus was, he said, you too? <laughs> and he stabbed a knife in him. Okay, so. Um, Hell of a way to go, though. A beat down like that, bad. Julie M., it can only get in the lungs if you breathe it in. Uh, it could be agonal respiration. That happens after death. So that oh, could be very a good, Julie. The good explanation. Very good explanation. Uh, Tim Hunt, unfortunately, they were still breathing unconscious, unconsciously. Yeah, that could be uh, agonal respiration. Uh, Joe Collada, please explain this. Uh, they were there because Tony was going to a mediation for Michael because he was flexing his muscles. Michael was way out of line. Tony was there to straighten things out. And you aren't going to kill Tony and not have Michael come or ha kill Michael and not have Tony come back or vice versa. So thank you, Joe. That's a good explanation. Um, Adam, only believe half what you see and a little what you hear. <laughs> True that. Um, all crews needed to be represented. Uh, Jesse Araby. Uh, yes. Maybe that's why so many were there. Bosses. That's what I said. That's what I said. Every crew had to be represented. It was like, you know, they want him to know or they wanted them to know. They wanted to send a message. We're either yeah. all together on this or we're not. Right. I so, don't think if uh, you were called to go there, you wouldn't show up because yeah. that would be a sign that you're on Tony's side. Um, Chicago doesn't have a coroner. Cook County has a medical examiner. That's a fact. RV Doc, I'm with Adam. They were dead in the trunk. Mm, see? Didn't Casino say that they were still breathing? They did say that in the movie Luminous Grin, yes. They said a lot of things in the movie Luminous Grin. Yeah, but like, they said they were, they were also killed at the grave site. <laughs> well, yeah, there was a lot of things that were – that was something we went through a couple of weeks ago. We, we spent some time on that. Um, you guys can go back and check that out. The Michael was supposed to be made. Tony was supposed to become a capo. That was the bait. Uh, I've never heard anything about Tony becoming a capo, and uh, that I've I never did. heard about. Did you? I did. Okay. Yeah. Just, I, I, everything's just all what I've – heard from people and from Frank and from different sources. So, but red, all good things have to come to an end. And we've had a hell of a time this afternoon. We're going to do a little bit more on uh, red's channel. We're going to be talking some more, but Hey, red, I'll see you next week. It's been fun, buddy. Thank you, Adam. Take care red. God bless everybody. My vlog.